Hey everyone, thank you so much for voting on last week's poll, as well as leaving me lots of heartwarming comments on my last video. I should let you all know now that while I do want to make content again, I'm going to be pacing myself a bit to refrain from any burnout. So it might not always be dark tie content in the future, but I do promise to at least post a build video for each class before I decide on what to do next. Because I am aware that a lot of you care about these videos most on my channel, so I don't mind helping when and where I can. Anyways, according to last week's poll, majority voted for the Zealot class to get the next build video, so here we go. With this build, I favored the Crusher with damage to Carapace and Flak Armored Enemies, along with Skull Crusher and Hammer Blow as my blessings. Our melee will be our primary weapon in most engagements outside of any range fights. It has a ton of versatility when it comes to fighting as you can use the push attack to normal horde and other close range specialists to output tons of weak spot damage and finesse damage. Along with that, the special action can be used to stagger crushers, bulwarks, and ragers with no issues. Combining this with skull crusher, we can push out even more damage if they're staggered, and with hammer blow, we gain impact upon each hit. These blessings synergize really well together, and create a nice balance in just about every fight. Now for my ranged option, I went with the Agrippina Mark 8 Braced Autogun, but this can be interchanged with pretty much any ranged weapon that you favor more. I personally just enjoyed using this to save my teammates from getting down by ragers, flamers, and the occasional pooch. All in all though, use what you enjoy most here, as our melee weapon will pretty much be our savior when it comes to saving our squad. On my autogun, I threw on extra range damage to elites and unyielding enemies to help trim down reapers and to do some decent chip damage to any monstrosities that come out. To assist with groups of shotgunners or ragers, Death Spitter and Fire Frenzy go hand in hand for tons of quick damage to any close range target. Now for my Curios, I found it much easier to roll with two max health Curios and a single toughness Curios because we have lots of toughness damage reduction within our talent tree. But I needed ways to mitigate damage flow that could come from other ranged enemies so I went with resistance to gunners and snipers. Along with that, I have some combat ability regen, toughness regen speed, and small boost to my overall health and toughness. This is so we can spam our combat ability to regen toughness quickly without sacrificing too much time regenerating out of combat. To better understand how this will all work, we should talk about the talent tree. The talents I chose here are all highlighting our ability to save our allies in a bad spot, as well as keep us safe if we're the last one standing. Ironically, just like my previous video, this build was something that I had been working on for the past 6 months. Both of these weapons never got any love from me. Back then, I had used them for a build that I could never get to work because I just never got good enough rolls when it came to getting blessings or perks. But itemization allows for more room for exploration and freedom. And thankfully, I'm finally able to get this build out. Now just like my last video, I'm going to classify our offensive skills first, so you can better understand when to be aggressive and when to pull back. First off, let's cover our combat ability with Fury of the Faithful. We can dash forward to open our attack up and guarantee a critical strike with 25% more damage. This is not only replenishing 50% of our toughness, but it also gives us 20% attack speed for 10 seconds. But we can take this even further with Invocation of Death, granting us 200% ability cooldown regen for 4 seconds on any melee crit hits. And to assure that we can escape a fight or push to another teammate, I also took Redoubled Zeal for the additional charge of Fury of the Faithful. Now since we're banking on gaining critical hits, I took Blazing Piety as my keystone. This allows us to gain Fury. Fury procs whenever 25 enemies die within 25 meters, and with Fury, we gain a 15% crit hit chance for 8 seconds. This can be brought even further with Fury Rising and Righteous Warrior. With these two keystone modifiers, we can gain Fury much faster and proc even more crit chance. I usually rely on these two to help regenerate my combat ability to an additional charge. So whenever I see a group of elites or specials, I open up with my ability into a heavy attack to start the cooldown towards refunding Fury of the Faithful. Ideally, you would always want to charge to regen toughness whenever needed or to get out of dodge. Next up, we have Anoint in Blood, for the additional 25% range damage to assist with any threat that's already on top of a teammate. And with Backstabber, we can easily gain 20% damage on any melee backstab hits. Again, this goes very simple. Go in with a special weapon charge to any enemy, and while they're getting up, lay down some light to heavy combos to easily feed the damage to your crusher. While we are within the horde, you should always be dodging and using your push attack to open up the way for your team. With Duelist, you gain 50% weak spot and critical hit damage for 3 seconds, on every successful dodge. This all builds up towards Fury and maintaining constant regen for our ability. I chose Hammer of Faith for the 30% impact damage, and this assures that any Ragers or Ogren types will fall flat on their butts whenever we make contact, opening up any assists from our allies and giving us time to think in between swings. 
Since we're going to be using our push shove attack more within horde spacing, it makes a lot of sense to take punishment. This also assures that whenever we hit at least 3 enemies, we're gaining 5% impact for 5 seconds, and this will stack, so don't let up when you see the enemies fall. Percy Unclean is on our way down, but always a nice talent to pick up as it makes trimming through the infested enemies and unyielding enemies that much easier because of the 20% damage increase. To make sure we can get the most out of our critical hits, I took Scourge. With this talent, we can actually see whenever a crit lands. The enemy will start to bleed, and while they bleed, falling hits made towards them will grant us 10% crit chance for 3 seconds, and this can stack up to 3 times. And lastly, for my offensive talents, we have the Emperor's Bullet. This talent goes well with our auto gun, as you can mow down any immediate threats in front of you, and as soon as that clip empties, your melee attacks gain an additional 30% impact strength and 10% attack speed for 5 seconds. Now for our defensive traits. These talents are our bread and butter for making sure we can last in any fight and clutch up if it's needed. First up, Immolation Grenades. These nades are very useful for pushing to a downed teammate. Throw one on them just as you're about to revive them, so you don't need to worry about enemies shredding down your stamina bar. Feel free to use these on choke points to secure easier control for your team whenever you're progressing through the level. Next is our aura ability, Beacon of Purity. With this, everyone can worry a whole lot less about corruption overtaking their health bars and worry more about surviving. Enduring Faith probably gives us the most defensive value out of this entire build solely for ourselves. As long as we proc a critical hit, for 4 seconds we will have 50% toughness damage reduction. That means every use of our combat ability will proc this talent immediately, so have no fear frontlining for your team. And for whenever you do take damage, we can rely on Restoring Faith to heal 20% of that damage over 4 seconds. So keep in mind that whenever we're dodging to proc Duelist, we're also going to be replenishing our toughness with Second Wind. Every successful dodge nets us an additional 15% toughness right back, so surviving alone is also extremely possible. But to assure that we're never going to be fighting alone, I took Shield to Contempt so whenever myself or an ally takes damage, we also gain 60% damage reduction for 4 seconds. And the best part is, this will constantly be of use to us because it will trigger again only after 10 seconds cooldown. And lastly for defensive talents, I took Until Death. While you shouldn't expect to go down, it can obviously happen. This prevents a fatal hit and grants you invulnerability for 5 seconds, with a 2 minute cooldown window. Just keep in mind that this could be useless if you get down by a dog, trapped by a trapper, or decide to hang off the side of a railing. Make sure to take out any shock troopers first, as they will always be your downfall. Aside these awesome talents, we also picked up a few modifiers for our operatives. Those being boost to our melee damage, movement speed, suppression, toughness, and damage reduction. Now you can become the Envoy of Death and face every foe the game director throws at you with pure vengeance and vigor. I finally feel so relieved to get this build out there for all of you, and I hope you all enjoy this build as much as I do. And just like last week, I'm going to be posting another poll on whichever class you believe deserves a build video next. But until then, I appreciate you coming by, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Have a great weekend everyone, and enjoy the rest of the match.
Oh, my God.